The first step for growing mushrooms is to create some spawn and what spawn is is mycelium that's been grown in uh, a non-solid substrate. Um, you can grow it on dowels, but something that you can mix with the substrate that you're going to fruit in. In this case we're using wheat berries. Uh, you use about a cup and a quarter of wheat per quart uh, jar that you're going to grow spawn in. I'm going to be doing two pints, so a cup and a quarter. Now the first thing you're going to want to do with that grain is you're going to want to rinse it. Now this is food grade triple cleaned wheat so this isn't going to be very dirty but uh, if you're getting feed grain uh, feed grade grain uh, this is really a necessity. You just want to run water in it and stir it a little bit. Now there, this the, this water's crystal clear, but if this was uh, grain that was feed grade grain or seed grade grain that hasn't been triple cleaned already, there would be a lot of floaties and a lot of extra stuff in it. And so once you've rinsed it and the water's coming off clear, uh, then the next step is to add about a teaspoon of spent coffee grounds and heaping teaspoon of spent coffee grounds per quart um, that you're planning on preparing and a half a teaspoon of gypsum and I've take, taken a bag of gypsum and poured it in this old vitamin bottle because it's got a an openable lid with a flat surface for getting a good even even measure so yeah and then we're going to take really hot water, hot tap water. And we're going to mix that together and then we'll, we'll let this soak uh, for 24 hours. Uh, 12 to 24 hours. 24 is better than 12, but if you're in a hurry you can, you can do it after 12 hours. So we'll set that on the stove and then we'll pick it up tomorrow. All right, once the grain is soaked, um, then you put it on the stove and bring it to a rolling boil. And let it boil for uh, about 10 minutes or so. Uh, this is to finish hydrating and softening the, the grain and also to um, heat it up so that it will kind of dry and evaporate um, once you take it off the stove. So this has been boiling now for about half the time and in a minute here we'll drain it off and I'll show you what to do then. All right, once it's done boiling you want to uh, drain the grain. And I'm just going to kind of let it sit here for, I don't know, half, 20 minutes, half an hour or so. And depending on how much, this is a small amount. Um, so this won't take as long as a larger amount. And I just kind of like to spread it out up the sides of the, the drainer, strainer, uh, to let it air. You can see it's steaming. And you want the grain to be fully moistened like it is right now except that 
dry enough that if you were to put it up, put some on a napkin or a uh, Kleenex, it wouldn't get the Kleenex wet. So that's the ideal moisture content that you're looking for. <clears throat> and if you've if you've prepared it properly, if you've cooked it for about boiled it for about 10 minutes or so, <clears throat> and then you let it cool and dry um, air like this. And you can occasionally mix it up while it's drying to uh, to make sure that it all airs and, and and dries out properly. Drying is almost the wrong term. It's but it is a, a reduction in the level of of moisture. But it's mostly surface moisture that you're. It's pretty much all surface moisture that you're getting rid of. So the moisture that's been absorbed by the grain um, stays with it, but the surface moisture it will be gone so we'll let that cool for a bit and then we'll put it in jars okay seems to be uh, dried off and cooled down adequately they're soft and moist but there's no water left behind when it touches something so that's, uh, that's the ideal state for your grain to be in when you put it in the jars. All right, now, when you're, when you're filling jars, the purpose you're going to use the jars for is going to determine how much you put in. If you're going to be using the jar for a grain-to-grain -grain transfer, in other words, if you're going to take uh, a jar of spawn that you already have growing and break it up and put a little bit into your new jar of grain, then you want to fill your jar about two-thirds full, a little, just a little over half to two-thirds full. If you're going to be inoculating it with spores or with a liquid mycelium concentrate, then you want to fill it probably three-quarters full, maybe even a little slightly more than that. And the simplest way is just to, to spoon it in. You can try pouring it in, but it uh, tends to get messy and you in, end up having to pour it back and forth a little bit to get the right amount. This is the simplest method, easiest method. And in my case, I'm uh, we're going to be using this to start spawn from raw mushrooms. So I'm filling it um, as if I was going to inoculate it. I'm filling it about three quarters of the way full. And just doing a couple of jars here. This is wheat, which I find uh, works really, really well with uh, with oyster mushroom for oyster mushroom mycelium, which is what these jars are going to be used. I'm going to use these in a to make mushroom mycelium spawn. So, oops. okay. Let's see, there's just a little bit left here. Maybe a little bit too much, but I'll live with it. You also, the reason you don't want to fill them completely full is once the mycelium um, is grown, you're going to want to be able to bang on it and break it apart, and that means you need a little room inside for things to move around. All right, so we'll just put some lids on the uh, here, the seal side up. They don't have to be super tight, but reasonably tight. And we'll, do, we'll put these in a water bath. All right, for the water bath process, you want the deepest pot you've got. If you don't have anything else you can use, you don't want the jars sitting right on the bottom of the pot because that can cause them to break. And so if you don't have anything else, you can use some rings from your jars. I like to use... Uh, enough that there's essentially a three-point landing spot for each jar. And you're going to want to put a foil cover over the top of your jar just to keep water from getting on your uh, 
air vent primarily while it's boiling or while it's uh, heating and then you just set that in the water you want it to if possible you want the, the water level to come up at least to the level that the grain is is at uh, didn't quite make it there but this one it's good and then we'll just turn on the heat and grab a thermometer and what we want to do is get this water bath up to about 180 degrees and then we'll cover it up and let it sit at 180 degrees for about an hour and this is a pasteurization process it's, it doesn't sterilize it if you have a pressure cooker and you can put them in the pressure cooker for 90 minutes at 15 psi um, that's more ideal than pasteurization <clears throat> but I'm trying to demonstrate that this can be done without any high-tech equipment and pressure cookers are kind of an expensive investment if you're not doing a lot of canning or a lot of mycology it's probably more than you'd be willing to invest I mean they start at around you know hundred and fifty dollars and go up from there unless you happen to get lucky and find one at a thrift store um, but anyway so we'll let this come up to temperature and then we'll give it a an hour long actually uh, make that about a 90 minute uh, bath at, at 180 degrees all right so once you reached 180 degrees you'll uh, you want to adjust the temperature so that I found that about medium medium is about right on my uh, on my burner but you'll probably want to play with it for 10-15 minutes to make sure that it's going to stay where you want it to before you cover take the thermometer out and cover it up and let it uh, let's see I suppose I can zoom back out cover it up and, and then just let it cook for 90 minutes at this temperature so once the um, 90 minutes of <clears throat> heating in the hot water bath is done go ahead and let it cool in the container this will assure that as the jars cool and air comes into them and it's going to be sterile air that's drawn into it and then once it's cooled off which um, in big pot can take several hours then we'll take them out after the jars have come out of the water bath, hot water bath, and are cooled, fully cooled off, um, when you're ready to inoculate the grain, you want to have a knife and maybe a pair of tweezers that you've uh, sterilized with alcohol, and I've already uh, put alcohol on my gloves and everything. And you want a good thick oyster mushroom. Um, that one's probably a little small. This one's kind of iffy, but we'll give it a shot. And crack the jars, but don't open them. And you want to do this in a still in a still area, a still air environment. A glove box would be ideal, but it's kind of hard to show you this in a glove box, so I'm going to do it in the open air. And what you're going to want to do is with your sterilized knife you just kind of make a a slit down the center of the mushroom and split it open and the inside is this this area in here is completely sterile um, or at least for our purposes and so you're going to take your sterile tweezers and just kind of notch a piece out and it's kind of stringy so once you start ripping it, it you should get a pretty good piece and then you just put that piece in your jar of grain just open and close it real quick so that you don't you minimize your risk of any contaminants there. and then uh, seal it back up and then kind of shake it around so that it's not just sitting on the top so it actually gets buried in the grain somewhere 
if you can see a little piece of it that that'll help you spot it um, there so then this will sit in the grain for several days and then I'll show you what's happened with it uh, with the mycelium is spread one more thing you always want to label your jars with what you've got in it and the date that you did it because it's real easy to forget if you're doing a lot of this and I do a lot of it okay there you go and then of course when you're done you can use the rest of your mushroom for lunch or dinner alright here we are just uh, 10 days later and as you can see the mycelium has spread through most of the grain in the jar and in a few more days this will be ready to uh, to use as spawn in a growing media substrate like straw so that's how you start your how you create spawn from uh, mushroom bits for use in growing mushrooms out to fruit or growing mycelium out to fruit.